Hello everyone. We're going to continue our discussion of divergent networks. So with some examples, I'll try to explain different aspects of this kind of networks. Let's first uh, start with the location of this kind of projects. As you can see here, the project that I have demonstrated in the previous lecture, it's close to the hilly part or the mountainous part of the terrain. And the reason behind that is that it has a significantly higher elevation in this portion and that gives it a significantly higher, larger command area. Command area means the area which can be irrigated from this location. And if we construct the divergent headwork much lower than that, suppose somewhere around here, then we would lose the ability to command the portion in the higher elevations that is here. We can command higher, uh, greater amount of areas by constructing this project even higher up in the river, but that will cause some other problems. As you can see, as we move upstream, the nearby areas become more uh, occupied by mountains. And if we construct a divergent network at this location, then the problem would be to carry the water to these locations because then we'd have to cross lots of natural barriers. For example, either we'd have to cross uh, these mountains like this, this hilly areas or we'll have to cross these kind of natural drains as you can see these natural drains or natural streams or small rivers or tributaries they are much more common in the mountainous part or the hilly part than they are in the plain part and that's why if we construct a project in the upstream uh, regions then Although we are having a greater command area, we will not be able to uh, carry the uh, water through a canal because uh, economically, because it will have to be crossing lots of mountains and natural drains and that is not a very trivial task because either you will have to construct some tunnels, dig some tunnels through these mountains or you will have to make some uh, cross drainage works. Cross drainage work means when you are transporting water across a natural stream that means your canal will have to come from this location to this location but in between these natural streams will have to be crossed and that is done by lots of other structures and therefore we generally do not prefer this kind of location and we also do not prefer a location which is much downstream that is in the plains region because we will then have very small amount of command area and this upstream areas these areas will not be able to command so this is a kind of optimum region where we can uh, set up our project There is one problem in this kind of location is that uh, there is a, there are lots of boulders in the river and that causes lots of seepage through the foundation because the boulder state of the river is not um, the river bed is not that um, is actually very porous because the it is mostly filled with large particles rather than small silt and sand particles but we have to compromise at least somewhere so if in this region we find some place where the amount of boulders is less and it is mostly sand and silt then that location will be far preferable now uh, i'd like to show you some pictures of this project that i visited uh, a few years ago so this project is called Bordikurai Irrigation Scheme 
near Arunachal border. So this is a picture taken from upstream. Here I was standing on the embankment, the guide bank. So you see the slope of the guide bank is protected with this kind of concrete box. And these are the underslice gates. These underslice gates will be, uh, these gates are closed so that some amount of water is stored in this location. Uh, here, some other gates are open. You see, these gates are raised so that uh, water can flow through them. And up above, you can see these kind of machines or motors which are connected to these gates by cables. This is one of the divide walls. This is one divide wall and this is another divide wall. This divide wall is actually part of the uh, fish ladder. This fish ladder is having another wall on the other side which is not visible from here. And it also has a small gate. That means the fish ladder is not always open. Only when it is needed then the fish ladder is opened for some time. So up to this point there are some gates and there is another additional gate in the fish ladder. The rest of the weir is ungated as you can see it's from this location up to this point. The weir is not having any gates and that means whenever water is above the top of the weir it can flow through these openings. There are no gates here. And in this particular project you can see that you cannot see the weir here. These are only the pillars that are supporting the roadway above the weir. But you cannot see any of uh, any part of the weir because there is so much sedimentation on the upstream that the sediments have risen to the level of the top of the weir. So the weir top or crest is at the same level as the sediments. There is a problem that occurs in most of these kind of projects. And this is the head regulator. This is constructed nearby the undersluices. And here also there are some this kind of arrangements, machine arrangements and this is a picture from the downstream side. So you can see the downstream of this under space gates. So these are the divide walls. This is one and you can see another one in a distance. And this is a small video that I have taken and uh, as you can see here, so I was standing on the guide bank or that uh, embankment. This guide bank goes like this to a uh, large distance upstream. And this is the head regulator. There is a small bridge to cross to the other side. Here you see the canal. The canal also you can see it's not very well maintained and there is uh, lots of sedimentation and as you can see I guess on the left hand side there is some erosion from the embankments of the canal also. So that has also filled up small, is some portion of the canal. And these are the gates. These are the machine arrangements which are connected with cables as you can see. And these cables run downwards and they are attached to the gates. So these gates can be raised or lowered as per necessity. 
now let's look at some other aspects i think this model is a little bit more to the scale than the previous lecture so this is a very wide river let's say and this is the fish ladder this is the weir this is the one divide wall here also you can consider it a divide wall and these under swiss gates they will the number of these gates or the size of these gates will depend on the highest amount of flood that needs to be released when that flood comes so here i have only shown four gates but if the highest flood is of very large magnitude then maybe we would have to provide some more gates here so that when flood comes we have a larger discharge capacity so that the upstream is not flooded now let's discuss some more about these under split uh, the silt excluders see they have a very peculiar uh, arrangement these are long tunnels the tunnel very close to this head regulator through which water is transferred to the canal that is the longest canal and as we move away that can uh, tunnel sorry thus as we move away from that these tunnels become shorter and shorter the reason behind that is when water goes into these gateways they have a component velocity component like this and if we had made all these tunnels of same length then because the velocity is happening this way then all these tunnels will water will not enter these tunnels and they will flow perpendicularly once we are making the tunnel once we are adjusting the tunnel lengths so that this tunnel is the longest and this tunnel is the shortest and so on so in that case because the water velocity is in this direction then most many of um, a major part of the lower part portion of the flow will enter these tunnels and therefore along with that the sediments or the silt will be trapped inside the these tunnels sometimes these tunnels may not be necessary if the natural river bed is much below the sill level sill means this level that is the threshold of this head regulator is called the sill if the river bed itself is much lower suppose 2 or 3 meters lower than uh, this level then these kind of sill excluders are not needed because the lower part is already much lower than the sill level so therefore the sediment which is carried by the lower portion of the current will not be able to enter these uh, these gateways so this is how this is uh, these are some of the facts that i want to add in continuation to the previous lecture and one more thing that i forgot to mention is that you see these cut off walls or the sheet piles these are provided here so that water doesn't simply flow straight from this point to the downstream end of the impervious floor and because of provision of these kind of cutoffs they will have to take a longer path they have to first go down then up then again horizontally then again in this cutoff they will have to go down then up so it increases the length of flow but one problem may be that what if the water just uh, water in the side of the uh, work of the uh, of this uh, impervious floor that is on the edges on the right hand side and left hand side this water can directly go from here to here and 
that can be prevented by extending these cutoffs to a considerable length and inserting them into these embankments so that when water tries to take this sideway it also has to again go through uh, this longer path because there will be cut off in the horizontal direction also and therefore the leakage will be reduced so that's all for this one thank you